in the last video we have discussed about classical free electron theory today we will discuss about quantum free electron theory classical free electron theory could not explain many physical properties like dependence of resistivity on the variation of temperature dependence of electrical conductivity on electron concentration etc see in classical free electron theory it is considered that all free electrons have the same kinetic energy and its value is 3 by 2 kt at a given temperature t so in order to overcome the drawbacks of classical free electron theory in 1928 somerfeld developed a new theory he included quantum mechanical concepts and fermi dirac statistics to the free electrons in the metal this theory is called quantum free electron theory or somerfeld model this theory quantum free electron theory or somerfeld model mainly depend on the assumptions mainly there are four assumptions first one the energy values of free electrons are quantized and are realized in terms of set of energy levels that means according to classical theory all electrons are having the same energy equal to 3 by 2 kt but in this theory different electrons are possessing different amount of energy but energy values are not continuous they are quantized if some electrons having energy equal to e1 some of them having equal to e2 some of them equal to e3 and so on that means energy values are increasing in step so we can represent the energy of these electrons by drawing horizontal lines that horizontal lines are called energy levels and the distribution of energy of free electrons must obey fermi dirac statistics i will speak about fermi dirac statistics little later second assumption is in a metal every energy level is filled in correspondence with pauli's exclusion principle so that means here i have drawn horizontal lines these horizontal line indicates the energies of electrons that is e1 e2 e3 and so on these represent the energies of different electrons so then how many electrons possess energy equal to e1 how many of them possess energy equal to e2 how many of them possess energy is equal to e3 and so on in order to get the answer to this we are using pauli's exclusion principle we have to fill the energy levels according to pauli's exclusion principle it says that each energy level can accommodate maximum of two electrons that means one is clockwise spinning electron another one is anti clockwise spinning electron that means one energy level is filled with maximum of two electrons second energy level that also contain maximum of two 
energy maximum of two electrons. Similarly, E3 contains maximum of two electrons and so on. So, that is the second assumption. So, that is about the feeling of energy level. Now, third assumption is the electrons move in a constant potential inside the metal. That means electrons are moving through the gap between the positive ions by colliding with the positive ions. So that means when it is moving inside the metal, irrespective of the distance between the electron and positive ion that experiences same amount of force wherever it present. That is the meaning of it moves in a constant potential. They are confined in the definite boundaries. They are moving between two well-defined boundaries. That is the third assumption. Fourth assumption is the attraction between electrons and lattice ions, that is positive ions, is ignored. That means while studying the electrical conductivity of metals using quantum free electron theory, we are not considering the collision or the attraction between electron and the positive ion. And also we are not considering when two electrons come closer, they get repelled because like charges repels, unlike charges attracts. So we are ignoring the repulsion between two electrons. Therefore, fourth assumption says attraction between positive ion and electron is neglected and repulsion between electron and electron is also neglected. Based on these four assumptions, the, we can speak about some of the physical properties of, of the metal. Now, next we will see what you mean by Fermi energy and Fermi factor. Fermi energy and Fermi factor. Okay. Now, First, let us we talk about the situation where we have maintained the temperature of the metal at zero Kelvin. Temperature of the metal is zero Kelvin. That means absolute is zero you have to maintain. So now at absolute zero, the electrons possess certain amount of energy. So now let us we consider we are applying Pauli's exclusion principle according to which we are filling the energy levels. Now let us you consider N is the concentration of electrons that is number of electrons present in the unit volume. So now I have to accommodate these N electrons as an example. Consider there are six electrons, then two electrons, one clockwise spinning electron, another one anti-clockwise spinning electron occupies the energy level E1. Next to two anti-clockwise, clockwise spinning electron occupies the energy level E2. And remaining two electrons occupies the energy level E3. That means here you can observe that among n electrons, two electrons possess maximum amount of energy. So that means this is the uppermost field energy level. Then already we have accommodated all n electrons up to E3. That means above E3 all the energy levels are vacant because we are not having any more electrons to fill that energy levels. 
this uppermost field energy level in the conductor at 0 kelvin so in this diagram i have represented that one is e3 that is called the fermi level that is e3 is equal to ef that is the fermi level remember therefore the uppermost field energy level at t equal to 0 kelvin is called fermi level okay now that means these two electrons possess maximum kinetic energy that means energy corresponding to fermi level that is the energy of the electrons which are present in the fermi level that is called fermi energy that means these two electrons possess maximum kinetic energy so therefore the maximum kinetic energy possessed by the electrons at 0 Kelvin is called Fermi energy. This is about Fermi energy. Next we will see about Fermi factor. Okay. To understand Fermi factor, we have to consider Fermi direct statistics. So, what is this? Now, when you are considering to this Fermi Dirac statistics, it is applicable for the particles which obey Pauli's exclusion principle. That means, in order to apply Fermi Dirac statistic, we have to consider the particles which obey Pauli's exclusion principle. Second condition is the particles you have considered is identical particles and they are indistinguishable. That means all the particles should have same mass, same charge, all parameters should be identical. Then you can say that they are identical particle. Because of this identical particle, you cannot distinguish from one particle another particle. Example is electrons. If you consider n number of electrons, you cannot distinguish from one electron to other electron. You cannot say that this is electron A, this is electron B, this is electron C because all electrons are having same mass, same charge, same shape, same spin. Every parameter is same because of they are indistinguishable and moreover this particle should have spin is equal to half that means the particle should possess spin angular momentum is equal to half into h divided by 2 pi where h is the Planck's constant the particles which obey this Fermi Dirac statistics are called fermions. Now, see, when you consider the electrons in the energy levels, we are considering the case T is equal to 0 Kelvin. All electrons are accommodated up to Fermi level. All the energy levels above Fermi level are vacant. At T is equal to 0 Kelvin, electrons could not get into vacant levels above the Fermi level by absorbing the thermal energy because at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, the thermal energy is not sufficient to excite the electrons from Fermi level or below Fermi level to the vacant levels which are present above the Fermi level. So, when you increase the temperature of the metal or conductor to T Kelvin, okay, so that means say 
you are increasing the temperature to lab temperature that is ordinary temperature now what happens the electrons absorb the thermal energy and that will get excited to the vacant energy levels which are present above the fermi level though the excitations are random occupation of electrons in various energy levels will be systematically governed by a statistical function this statistical function is given by fermi and dirac therefore that is referred to as fermi dirac statistics the statistical function is referred to as a fermi factor then what is the use of studying this fermi factor the information about number of electrons in a given energy level e any one you can consider either this or this or this hmm? is obtained from fermi factor so that means what when you increase the temperature of the conductor electrons present in the fermi level or nearer to the fermi level that get excited to the vacant energy levels now at t kelvin how many electrons for understanding purpose i am representing this energy level as e how many electrons are present in the energy level e when you increase the temperature of the conductor to t kelvin the answer is given by this fermi factor so existence of electron in a particular energy level can be explained using this fermi factor so what is this fermi factor the probability of existence of electrons in a an energy level e at steady temperature t is equal to f of e is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt where ef is the fermi energy k is the boltzmann constant t is the steady temperature that is say lab temperature expressed in kelvin okay so what do you mean by this f of e if you are saying that according to this if you raise the temperature to t kelvin from 0 kelvin this energy level e contain f of e number of electrons that means if you consider one electron in the energy level ef by absorbing the energy f of e part of the electron is occupying e to better understand i will give an example as say f of e is equal to 0.2 that means theoretically speaking if one electron absorb the thermal energy from the surrounding then its point two part get excited to energy level e but practically an electron cannot be subdivided so then what is the meaning of f of e is equal to point two that means if you consider 10 electrons which are present in the fermi level and below fermi level out of which out of which two electrons get excited to energy level e by absorbing the thermal energy at temperature t kelvin this is the information provided from the fermi factor so now we will discuss about variation of fermi factor 
with respect to temperature. Now, consider the first case where temperature T is equal to 0 Kelvin. Consider the energy levels. This is the Fermi level EF. Consider the energy levels which are present below Fermi level. That means E is less than EF. E is less than EF. So now we have to apply this condition to this equation. That is F of E is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by k into 0. So that means this is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power e minus ef divided by 0. 1 by 0 is infinity but e is less than ef therefore E minus EF is a negative quantity. Therefore, this is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus infinity. As you know, this is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by bringing to the denominator e to the power infinity. That is 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by e to the power infinity is infinity. That means 1 divided by 1 plus 1 by infinity is 0. This is equal to 1. That means Fermi factor below Fermi level is 1. What does it mean? The meaning of this is all the energy levels which lies below the Fermi level are completely filled. That is Maximum of two electrons is present or in all the energy levels which are lying below EF at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. This is the first case. Fermi factor is 1. Now consider the second case. T is equal to 0 Kelvin but E is greater than EF. Again the same procedure. F of E is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power E minus EF by K into 0. 1 plus here same thing. But E is greater than EF. Therefore E minus EF is a positive quantity. Therefore what happens here? 1 plus e to the power infinity is infinity. That is 1 by infinity. That is equal to 0. That means probability of finding the particle above Fermi level at t is equal to 0 Kelvin is 0. That means no electrons are present above EF at t is equal to 0 Kelvin. That means all the energy levels above EF are completely vacant. This is the second case. So now consider the case. Now T is greater than 0 Kelvin when you increase the temperature. So when you increase the temperature. Now let us you consider the energy levels which lie much below Fermi level. Let us you consider this. E is much much less than EF. So because of this what happens? The probability of finding the particle F of E here that is 1 divided by 1 plus E minus EF divided by K into T. T is not equal to 0 now. It is greater than 0 Kelvin. But E is very very less than EF. 
because of this what happens is its value is also nearly equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus infinity that is equal to nearly 1 not exactly that means when you consider the case greater than 0 Kelvin but much well below the Fermi level the probability of finding the particle is almost equal to 1. Now that, that means this case that means what as you come from the bottom to top that is towards EF the probability value is goes on decreasing. It is very clear when you consider the case E is equal to E E F. What happens? Apply the condition. F of E F of E is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus E to the power E minus E F by K T. But what happens here? 1 divided by 1 plus since E is equal to E F, E minus E F becomes 0, 0 divided by K T. That is 1 divided by E to the power 1 plus E to the power 0 divided by K T is 0. That means 1 divided by 1 plus E to the power 0 is 1, 1 divided by 2. That means what you can observe at t is equal to 0 Kelvin, as you move towards E of, F of E value start to decrease from 1 at E is equal to E of, its value exactly becomes half and if you consider the energy levels above E of, the probability value goes on decreasing from 0.5. So, this is how the Fermi factor varies with respect to temperature. So this one we can represent schematically. Let us we represent this one using schematically. So that means here we are taking the graph along y axis f of e we are taking Along this, we are considering the energy E. Consider the case T is equal to 0 Kelvin. So you have observed F of E value is equal to 1 up to E F because all energy levels are completely filled. F of E value is 0 above E F. That means this is E1, E2, E3 and so on. This is EF. This is above that. That means here this value is 1. So at E1, F of E value is 1. At E2, F of E value is 1. At E3, it's 1. Like this. So that means if you join this, you are getting a straight line parallel to energy axis or X axis. But when you go above f of e, f of e above e f, f of e value becomes suddenly zero. That means you are getting a step function here. So that means this is the graph represents the variation of f of e with respect to e at t is equal to zero Kelvin. Now let us we draw the graph for T greater than 0 Kelvin. As we already discussed, when E is much much less than E of, probability value is almost equal to 1. As you move towards E of, its value started to decrease. At E is equal to E of, its value becomes a half. Then, if you go above E of, again it started to decrease. See. This is the graph corresponding to T greater than 0 Kelvin. This is the discussion of 
Fermi factor with respect to temperature and energy. So now we will define the another term that is density of states or density of energy states. So here you can consider the number of available energy states per unit volume per unit energy range centered at a certain energy level E. So that means you can consider one electron is present here. This is one electronic state or one energy state. This is second energy state. That means each energy level contain two energy states. So therefore, how many number of electrons are there? That much hmm? if you consider here. So likewise, here you have to consider the unit volume Consider a energy range E. So consider this is centered at E. Then consider an interval. If you this value minus this value is equal to one. One electron volt as an example. One unit. So then how many energy states are available for the occupation of electrons? that is called density of a state. That is, in the unit energy range, how many available energy states are present that is called density of energy state. Density of energy state is abbreviated as G of E. It can be shown that G of E is equal to 4 pi into 2, 2m by h cut square whole to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power half. h cut means h divided by 2 pi. h divided by 2 pi. Okay. So, so now, sorry, this is 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power half. Okay. So now, let us you consider, see in the unit energy range, available energy state is G of E. Suppose instead of this, if you consider the energy difference between the two energy level is DE, in, in this range, how many electronic states are present? That is, if unit energy range is the available energy is G of E. If the energy level difference is D, how many energy states are present? That is G of E into DE. That means this is equal to 4 pi into 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power half into DE. That means for G of E, for this equation you have to multiply it with the DE on both sides. Now, next is we have to obtain the expression for Fermi energy at zero Kelvin. You have to obtain the expression for Fermi energy. Fermi energy at zero Kelvin. Now consider you have to get the information. Now you consider the two energy levels which are separated by a distance is equal to DE. So that means what? Consider 
an energy level E. Consider ener another energy level that is E plus dE. So, now as you know, the number of available energy states, that is, how many chairs are available for the occupation of the electrons between E and E plus dE, that is nothing but density of energy states. We have to consider and according to which density of energy state is G of E. But as already discussed, if the number of available energy states between the energy levels E and E plus dE is G of E into dE. So therefore, in this energy range, the available energy states, that is available chairs for the occupation of electrons is G of E into dE. See, one electron is equal to one electronic state or one energy state that is equal to one chair, right? So that means if one electron is present, means one electronic state is present, then the given energy level is occupied by F of E electrons. But in our case, available electrons is equal to available energy states is G of E into dE. Then how many electrons are present between E and E plus dE? That is F of E into G of E into dE. That is, I am writing this one now as Try to understand this. So, number of electrons, number of electrons present, present in the energy level E and E plus dE is equal to dN that is equal to G of E into F of E into dE. This is how many electrons are present in this energy levels. Okay. So, now, but in our case, our aim is to get the expression for Fermi energy at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. That means when you consider our earlier diagram, this. So, the maximum occupied energy level is the Fermi level. So, at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, therefore I am representing this one as EF0. EF0. Therefore, we have to get total how many electrons are present between 0 and EF0. That is, we have to get total number of electrons present between the energy level 0 and the energy level, that is the Fermi level, EF0. What we have to do? Fraction of electrons. Hmm? We know to get the total number of electrons, we have to integrate this. From where to where we have to integrate? From 0 to EF0. We have to integrate from 0 to EF0. So, therefore, we can write this is equal to integration 0 to EF0 g of e into f of e into dE. So, we are considering the case at t 
T is equal to 0 Kelvin. But we know that at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, up to Fermi level, all the states are completely occupied by electrons. That means the Fermi factor F of E is equal to 1. Therefore, we can write this one as 0 to EF0 G of E into DE because F of E is equal to 1 here. F of E is equal to 1 from 0 to EF0. So now in the next step, what we have to do is we have to substitute the value for GE. So we have to substitute for this. Therefore, n is equal to integration 0 to EF0 into G of E is equal to 4 pi into 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2 into e to the power half into de. Now, when you observe here, 4 pi 2m, m is the mass of the electron, h is the Planck's constant, therefore this 4 pi into 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2, that is a constant, you can take outside the integration sign, so that is 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2 into 4 pi here, this, then integration 0 to EF0 e to the power half into DE. So therefore, you know the integration that is 4 pi to the power 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2. Integration of e to the power half into dE is e to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2. Limit varies from 0 to EF0. So that means this is equal to 4 pi into 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2. So it becomes 2 by 3. So upper limit is EF0. E is replaced by EF0 to the power 3 by 2. Lower limit is 0. So you are getting total number of electrons N is equal to this much. So that is what I have written here. Then you can multiply 4 pi into 2, 8 pi divided by 3, same 2m by h square to the power 3 by 2, ef0 to the power 3 by 2, same thing. Then rearrange the equation to ef0 to the power 3 by 2, that is 3n divided by 8 pi, this comes to numerator, 2m comes to denominator, h square divided by 2m to the power 3 by 2. Now, you require EF0, our aim is to get the expression for Fermi energy at 0 Kelvin. Therefore, EF0 is equal to 3n by 8 pi to the power 2 by 3, right? If x square is equal to y, then x is equal to y to the power half. Similarly, here EF0 to the power 3 by 2, therefore you require EF0 Therefore, reciprocal on the here, 3n divided by 8 pi to the power 2 by 3, h square by 2m to the power 3 by 2, whole to the power 2 by 3. 3, 3 get cancelled, 2, 2 get cancelled. Remaining term is now 3n by 2 pi to the power 2 by 3 into h square by 2m. Next, what I am doing is, I am writing 8 as 
टू टू द पावर थ्री सो दैट मीन्स टू टू द पावर थ्री होल टू द पावर टू बाय थ्री इज इक्वल टू थ्री थ्री गेट कैंसल्ड टू स्क्वायर टू स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू फोर हियर दैट इज आई एम रिप्लेसिंग वन बाय एट बाय फोर हियर सो रिप थ्री एन डिवाइडेड बाय फाइव टू द पावर टू बाय थ्री एट टू द पावर टू बाय थ्री इज रिप्लेसड बाय फोर हियर एच स्क्वायर बाय टू एम देन इट बिकम्स एच स्क्वायर बाय एट एम इनटू थ्री एन बाय फाइव टू द पावर टू बाय थ्री दर फोर द एक्सप्रेशन फाइनल एक्सप्रेशन फॉर परमी एनर्जी एट जीरो केल्विन इज एच स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एट एम टू द पावर थ्री एन डिवाइडेड बाय फाइव टू द पावर टू बाय थ्री सो दिस इज द expression for for me energy at zero kelvin See, according to this quantum free electron theory, as you have observed the diagram here, different electrons are possessing different amount of energy. Energy values are quantized; they are increasing in step. So, as you observed here, this is Fermi level. Above Fermi level, all the energy levels are vacant at t is equal to zero Kelvin. but from this diagram it is clear that when you raise the temperature of the metal the energy required to excite the electron is less for the electrons which are present in the fermi level or near to the fermi level therefore when you raise the temperature of the metal the electrons which are present in the fermi level or nearer to the fermi level they can easily get excited to the vacant levels which are present above the fermi level that means these electrons can easily transfer from here to this vacant levels that means according to this theory all free electrons are not taking part in the conduction process that means in classical free electron theory all free electrons are the conduction electrons but according to quantum free electron theory all free electrons are not conduction electrons those electrons present in the fermi level or nearer to the fermi level are only taking part in the conduction process they are only the conduction electrons this is the main difference between the classical free electron theory and quantum free electron theory okay using this concept now we have to explain two success of or merits of quantum free electron theory first one is dependence of resistivity i am representing resistivity or as a rho with respect to temperature so in classical free electron theory we have observed that rho is proportional to square root of t this is classical value but experimentally rho is proportional to t this is experiment therefore this is one of the drawbacks of classical free electron theory let us we see by applying quantum free electron theory what result we will get see expression using quantum free electron theory we can deduce the expression for conductivity as n e square tau f divided by m so here tau f is the mean collision time 
but f represent see in classical free electron theory mean collision time is considered calculated for all free electrons but in this theory mean collision time is considered for those electrons present adjacent to the fermi level only so that means only for conduction electrons mean collision time is calculated therefore it is abbreviated as tau f but as you know mean that means what we have to lambda f represent what lambda f also represent the mean free path calculated for these conduction electrons so distance is equal to velocity into time what is vf vf is nothing but fermi velocity fermi velocity is the velocity of electrons which are present in the fermi level velocity of electrons present in the fermi level so from this you can write this one as tau f is equal to lambda f divided by vf so substitute here sigma is equal to n e square lambda f divided by m into vf so that means it is the velocity of electron present in the fermi level but energy corresponding to fermi level is called fermi energy that is half m vf square fermi energy at 0 kelvin for a given material is a constant because it is the highest occupied energy that means that two electrons possess the highest velocity therefore it is a constant right which implies vf is a constant value for the given material so therefore in this expression n concentration of electron that is constant e charge of the electron that is constant m mass of the electron constant vf is a fermi velocity that is also constant that means sigma is proportional to lambda f that is it is depending on mean free path now how this mean free path varies with respect to temperature that one we have to see now consider the conductor so dots indicates lattice points or positive ions so electrons are moving through the gap between the positive ions so as you increase the temperature the temperature of the conductor these positive ions absorb more and more thermal energy when they absorb more and more thermal energy they will vibrate with the larger and larger amplitude as temperature increases the vibration also increases as vibration increases probability of collision between electron and positive ion increases that means the scattering of electron increases as the temperature increases as temperature increases scattering of electron increases what happens the distance traveled by the electron between two consecutive collision that decreases that means as temperature increases amplitude of vibration increases but the mean free path lambda f that decreases because of more number of collisions that is lambda f is inversely proportional to temperature so but sigma is proportional to lambda f therefore sigma is inversely proportional to temperature 
So resistivity is nothing but reciprocal of the conductivity. Therefore, resistivity is directly proportional to temperature. This is accordance with the experimental result. Therefore, this is the first merit we have discussed. So now, second merit. Okay. That is dependence on electrical conductivity on electron concentration. So, second demerit we have to discuss now. So, second demerit that is nothing but electrical conductivity with respect to electronic concentration that is number of electron so as you know sigma is equal to n e square tau f divided by m so this is equal to n e square tau f is replaced by lambda f divided by m into v f see according to classical theory you know conductivity of is the metal is depending on electronic concentration that is number of electron present in the unit volume according to classical theory trivalent metal like aluminium is better conductor than monovalent metal copper but that is not true how we can resolve this problem using this quantum free electron theory according to quantum free electron theory all free electrons are not conduction electrons only those electrons having energy equal to or nearer to fermi energy will take part in the conduction process using this process we say that sigma is not only depend on n it also depend on lambda f by vf ratio when you consider the concentration of aluminium that is concentration of electrons in aluminium metal that is 2.13 times greater than the concentration of free electrons in copper metal so but here you have to consider the conductivity is mainly depending on the ratio lambda f by vf but when you consider this value for copper and aluminium we can observe that the ratio lambda f by vf for copper which is equal to 3.73 times greater than the value of lambda f by vf for aluminium so that means from this it is clear that lambda f by vf ratio is greater for copper compared to aluminium hence copper is the better conductor than aluminium. Thank you.